Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we have a matchup of East and West, the best of East and West. It's FP Jorn versus Grand Seiko, and moreover, it's the first ever versus matchup of Quartz luxury watches. We're going to start with the FP Jorn because, although Grand Seiko is a bit of a boutique brand in the West. Nevertheless, FP Journe is almost a micro-manufacturer. It's worth mentioning that the watch you see right here, the Elegant 48 Titalt, is part of a separate series that's not counted among the conventional FP Journe production. The Elegant production is about 1,500 watches. FP Journe production mechanical is about 600 to 900. The Elegant 48 launched back in 2016, and it was by popular demand. A lot of men had seen the 2014 FP Journe Elegant women's watch, and thought, you know what, without the diamonds in a larger case size, I would be all about that. And in fact, that's exactly what F.P. Journe delivered. Subsequently, the brand also delivered the Titalt coating. And you can see that it's a plasma oxidation on top of grade 5 titanium. Now, the watch has a lovely dark tone that contrasts better with the dial features on this Titalt version than it does on the standard titanium. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you get a good sense of this watch. First, it's a form watch with a tortue shape. Second, it has a contour to its case, and you can see that well, that traces the arc of the wrist. So, 48 millimeters is the lug to lug dimension from tip to tip across the wrist. The watch is only 7.7 .7 millimeters thick. The spacing between the lugs is 18 millimeters, and the timepiece is 39 millimeters from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, not counting the crown. It wears quite easily. I'll try to show it to you flush on my wrist, maybe pull it back a little bit better, show it in outright proportion as you would wear it. It is a very comfortable watch, and in titanium, it's feather light, and it is very flush, flat to the skin. I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. So though this is considered to be the men's elegant. Nevertheless, it's a viable unisex option. Jumping into the short game of the watch, which is to say the strap, the case details, the clasp. You can see that it's very thoughtfully designed with pull tab spring bars for easy removal of the strap without tools. You've got the FP Journe logo repeating as an interlocking motif on the underside of the navy blue strap, and you can see that it creates air pockets on the underside to better allow the wrist to breathe. The strap is also nicely contoured. You can see how it flares as it approaches the lug to actually match the swell of the lugs. It's a very coherent look, and you can see it's been profiled to match the junction with the case, so it has an all-of-a-piece, almost bracelet-like look. It is a matte finish on the top, and you can see there's an FP Journ titanium folding buckle internally with a Titalt external coating, and you may wonder, why Titalt other than the cool, darkened look? Well, it does objectively make the material a little bit tougher to scratch or scuff, so it also has a protective function in addition to its fashion function. The crown is a screw-down unit. It's the classic knurled double dimple FP Journ crown, and it allows the watch to receive a rated 30 meters of water resistance, but the watches are tested to 50, and I've heard it from FP Journ representatives, that is reps of the company itself, that you can absolutely swim with this watch, and that's the intention. The case is interesting in its composition. You can see it has a little bit of a bevel that traces the arc of the bezel, and then the bezel nicely traces the arc and the flares and contours of the case. You can see there are Holt head screws used here, as you'll find on other FP Journe timepieces. Likewise, you'll find that the watch features dial components that are fixed in place by visible and black polished screws. You can see the four of them flanking a dial that is a solid block of Luminova and exceptional at night. You've got the traditional FP Journe font, you've got the railroad minutes outboard, you've got mini railroad subseconds with a counterweighted needle style hand, the biomorphic tapered Journe hands, then there's a little kinetic actuator down at about 425, I'll call it. That little weighted block actually wakes the watch up because you wind up in a situation where, and I'm going to open up the case back as much as I can, the caliber 1210, which you could see on this watch and which features remarkable 4N red gold for its bridges and plates, but the movement itself can go to sleep after 35 minutes and it will remember the time via a microprocessor, but it will also deactivate the stepper motors. So the watch in 
Conventional use will last 8 to 10 years between battery changings, but if you were to simply shelve the watch due to the ability to remember the time without actually stepping the hands by motor, the watch could sit and remain functional and viable for 18 years on the shelf. That is a wonderful feature and it's very cool because when you pick up the watch, the hands will actually retrace the arc to the correct time from their neutral position and they will always move in the shortest direction to the correct time, whether that's clockwise or counterclockwise. It's an 18 joule Swiss made movement. I'm going to turn everything inside out here so you can better see it. It's quite nicely made. As you can see, it's a quartz caliber that was designed to be seen. There's Cote de Genève, there's the red gold, there's the unexpected flourish of a heart at the root of many of the individual circuits. Uh, it is a remarkably sophisticated quartz movement and it is exclusive to FP Journe. It features stop seconds so you can set the watch precisely to a reference time and of course the battery with that potential 18 year service life, 8 to 10 when actually worn on the wrist is a bit of a jewel. The watch of course 18 jewels and watchmaker serviceable, although many electronic articles today are considered to be disposable. This is designed to be a lifetime movement. The movement, the 1210, is designed to be serviced by FP Journe watchmakers for as long as the owner lives. So just like an FP Journe mechanical watch, this one is designed to go the distance. Now let's talk about the Challenger. Launched in 2018, this was part of the 25th anniversary of the Grand Seiko 9F caliber from the early 1990s. And of course, the original 9F was a technological breakthrough, one of the finest quartz calibers ever created. This, the Grand Seiko SBGV 247, stainless steel limited edition of 1,000 pieces to commemorate the 9F. Now, the watch on the wrist has a very different stance than the Journe. As you can see, it's a timepiece that's fairly imposing. Though not large, it has severe geometries that give it the read of a far larger timepiece. We'll even move out a little bit here and try to get more of the watch in scale on my wrist. And you can really see that my 16 centimeter circumference wrist wears this one easily. It's more massive in case form, but it is shorter across the wrist than the Journe. At 46.8 millimeters lug to lug, the thickness of the case is 12 millimeters on the nose. I think this is all looking a little bit washed out. Let's get a bit darker, zoom back in, recover our focus. And you can see that the timepiece has a very distinctively Grand Seiko shape and stance. The 20 millimeter spacing between the lug and you can see there are strap tool apertures means that this is a fairly easy one to accessorize with an OEM or aftermarket strap. 40 millimeters in diameter, it's not a huge watch, though it does seem to be a larger watch in almost every important dimensional respect, or at least proportional respect, than the FP Journe. Move out, give you one more good look of the watch on the wrist, and then we'll talk about the strap, and we will talk about the buckle. The strap is a hybrid piece. It's navy blue, so though it looks black on the camera, it's a navy blue textile weave on the top with orange accents. And you can see that the underside is actually calfskin, so this is not a swimmable strap. It's equipped with a very deluxe deployment clasp. You can see a twin trigger system, whereas the Journe uses a friction fit. This is a more secure trigger fit system, nicely executed. It even gives you one stainless steel strap minder, so this is a very upscale take on both straps and buckles. It feels and, in fact, is expensively specced. So you can see the case featuring the classic black Zeratsu polish on the polished facets. It's not quite the 44 GS case, which is Grand Seiko's highly faceted polyhedron form and has been since the late 60s. Now, this is inspired by that, but it's not exactly that. You can see all of the facets mirror smooth. Those are hand finished facets. That black polish known as Zeratsu, also known as uh, Zalitz polish, is a one-time Swiss and German tradition that was imported and internalized by Seiko and Grand Seiko, who are now probably the world's foremost practitioners of this art. You can see there are also uh, satin-finished facets, so there's a little bit more nuance to this case with the two different types of finish, as well as the fasting and the creases compared to what you see on the Journe. Now, the dial simply looks and likely is more expensive to create than what you see on the Journe. You have all applique indices instead of printed features. You can see there is a recurring 
recurring quartz motif on the dial base, which is somewhere between blue and purple. It's like that Nogaro blue Audi RS paint code. Open up a different window, check that out, keep me streaming. The features of the dial, that is all applique, the logo, the hands, as well as the indices, are diamond polished by hand by artisans who only do this. You'll also note the same treatment has been applied to the aperture for the date, and the watch does have a date in contrast to the Journe. The dial has a few well-chosen orange accents that pop well against the base. Underneath the case back, caliber 9F82, watchmaker made, watchmaker regulated, stop seconds with a quick set date. This is a nine jewel movement with a number of interesting refinements. Three year power reserve compared to potentially 18 for the Journe, eight to 10 in service. So this is a three year versus what's basically eight to 10. That said, the watch has the quick set for the date, and the date being a feature the Journe does not have. It also features thermo compensation, a feature the Journe does not have. So in very hot or very cold conditions, this watch is going to be far more accurate than the Elegant 48 and its caliber 1210. It also features a trimmer system, which allows the Grand Seiko watchmaker to adjust for the natural quartz drift that will occur over the lifetime of the watch. Both of these quartz movements designed to last for a lifetime on the wrist of the owner, but the ability to adjust for the natural deviance of a quartz crystal over time is a feature exclusive to the Grand Seiko in this test. I'll also mention that there is a twin pulse motor system, so the two pulses help to ensure that you have these long, arcing, graceful hands, which generally take up a lot of energy, but because of the twin pulse system, Grand Seiko is able to extend those hands gracefully without using up a ton of battery power to motivate their operation. And finally, there's a lash adjustment system for the Grand Seiko that precisely adjusts, and I'll follow it, the seconds hand to align with the index perfectly every single time. And that is a technology unique to the Grand Seiko in this test. Nine joules, and again, watchmaker serviced, it will periodically have to go back in roughly every three to five years for watchmaker relubrication and adjustment, but it is worth your while. All of that well protected with a screw down crown down to 200 meters so this is one tough tank of a watch on your wrist. So let's talk about advantages and let's start with the FP Journe. Okay, advantages, FP Journe. First and foremost, we gotta talk about that cool standby mode. First, the watch has a huge power reserve advantage, lasting eight to 10 years on the wrist compared to about three for the Grand Seiko battery advantage Journe. The fact that the watch can basically shut down its motors and sit inert and potentially functional for 18 years is incredible. Try that with your cell phone. Heck, try that with any quartz watch. Uh, the watch does feature epic loom. The dial is a solid disc of loom, and you see all the features of the dial in the form of a negative, that is the black on top of the light at night. There will be a loom shot, it will be excellent. The watch is lighter, thinner, it is more compact, more comfortable, and likely to wear better on a smaller wrist because of it. The combination of the titanium and the contour of the case is what wins out. If you've got a very small wrist, say 13 centimeters in circumference, or you want the more comfortable or elegant watch, it is in fact the Elegant. Now, let's talk about the worthwhile display case back. On most quartz watches, you wouldn't bother. On this one, it's actually worthwhile. There is a good deal of hand-finished componentry in there, and with very few exceptions, I normally say cover a quartz movement. Here, I actually am glad that you're able to see it. So a display case back and a movement worth your while. Snob appeal. It's an FP Journe, it's a Swiss watch. For some, that's going to be the difference maker. Not for me, and possibly not for you, but for some, that will be a consideration. We are talking about status symbols and luxury here. Let's talk about the tab strap. Okay, you have those tabs that allow you to easily remove the strap. That's an advantage, no tools required. Second, the fact that the strap is rubber means right from the factory you can swim with the strap without worrying about changing it out to protect leather. So on that basis, FP Journe, advantage. Let's also talk about good store value. This is a watch that sells for about $11,200 new, and it's a watch that sells for about $11,750 pre-owned. So on that basis, you could probably buy this watch, own it for a year, as long as you don't gash it or gnash it, you could probably sell it for pretty close to what you paid. And that is a wonderful ownership experience. Now let's jump all the way over to the Grand Seiko. Okay, advantages, Grand Seiko. I'm a fan of this watch, and I'm a fan of Grand Seiko generally. So number one, precision. This is a watch with the quartz trimmer for long-term precision, the thermal compensation circuit for the short-term, the double pulse for power reserve 
and of course the lash adjustment for precision of indication. This is a watch with accuracy of plus or minus 10 seconds per year and the FP Journe cannot match that. Let's talk about a useful date. I like the feature. You may not. So depending on your perspective, the date is either adv advantage or disadvantage. For me, for an everyday watch, Advantage Grand Seiko. Hand finished case, Zeratsu finish executed against a spinning tin plate by eye, hand coordination, and experience. The Jorn case is not hand finished to that degree. Let's talk 200 meters water resistance versus 30. Even if you can swim with the Jorn, you can swim with confidence and wipe out on the water skis while wearing the Grand Seiko. This is iconic Seiko style, and the 9F in a quasi 44 GS case is definitely core Grand Seiko, whereas I don't believe the Elegant is truly core FP Journe, and I almost feel like it's the burden of proof that Ferrari Dino owners had for years with the V12 guys, trying to argue that they are in fact a member of the core Ferrari community. I don't think the Elegant is there for Grand Seiko guys. This watch gets a big thumbs up. Let's talk about price. This is a $3,300 watch new, pre-owned about $2,500. So on that basis, advantage Grand Seiko compared to the $11,000 $200 FP Journe. No case coating here. You might scratch it, you might scuff it, but it's easy to refinish at Grand Seiko, and of course there's no worry about showing a shiny metal through a coating. I don't like coated watches, and on that basis, advantage Grand Seiko. Let's talk about dial quality. The fact that the features of the dial, the hands, the indices, the GS logo, the aperture for the date, are all hand finished, well that endears this watch to me. And the dial looks, and in fact probably is, more labor and intensive to create than the FP Journe. Finally, I think center seconds are just a whole lot more practical and easy to read. It's tough for me to distinguish individual seconds on the Journe. I can see general 10 and 15 second sweeps, but here it's easier to read the seconds precisely. So based on the advantages of each watch, I'm going to go with the Grand Seiko. It's more me. I like its look. I like its higher water resistance. I like its quirkiness. I like its technology. I like its precision. I like its price and its value proposition. For all these reasons and the rarity of only 1,000 pieces in existence, give me the SBGV 247. You guys let me know which of these two watches you would choose for your own wrist. FP Journe wins the loom shot by a mile. Although I do think at arm's length, the Grand Seiko might be a little easier to read.